Next up, we have Galvantula. Players will remember its pre-evolution, the adorable Joltik, popping up everywhere in the black and white games' charred stone cave. Also, did you know Joltik is only three inches tall? I mean, they don't look that small in the movie, but that's what it says in the Pokedex. And of course, those with a fear of spiders have avoided this Pokemon, because what's worse than a Tarantula? A Tarantula that can electrocute you, of course. Nevertheless, today we're facing our Arachnophobia and examining this critter's impact on the competitors. So we ask, how good was Galvantula actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Galvantula was, unfortunately, not an impressive Pokemon in its debut generation. Now, it does have some interesting qualities, like its ability Compound Eyes, which lets Galvantula reliably hit Thunder, letting it hit hard and threaten Paralysis to boot. Plus, its secondary Bug Stab let it threaten the Grass types that would wall Thunder without needing to resort to a hidden power. Finally, 108 is a great base speed stat. However, this just wasn't enough to survive in OU. Galvantula is incredibly frail, and as such cannot effectively make use of its few resistances, meaning it struggles to switch it safely. It was ineffective offensively too. While its stab combination wasn't bad, it was completely walled by the common ground flying types like Landorus T and Gliscor. And if it chose Hidden Power Ice for them as opposed to Hidden Power Fire, it would just get walled by Ferrothorn. Plus, even with Thunder's power, 97 base special attack wasn't going to be doing it any favors in breaking bulky stables like Heat Ran and Jirachi. To top it all off, it was also Stealth Rock Week. So, no OU for Galvantula. And as it turns out, no UU either. Again, it didn't hit hard enough to justify its Stealth Rock weakness and its immense difficulty switching in to begin with. Being completely unable to scratch the omnipresent Snorlax wasn't good either. So it was RU where our friendly neighborhood Electro Spider resided. But there it struggled as well, but at least it wasn't unusable. Its problem of struggling to switch in while being Stealth Rock weak lingered, and those were difficult issues to overcome. Especially when it struggled with metagame staples like Steelix and Golurk, while also having fierce competition with other metagame staples, like fellow electric types Manetric, who had excellent moves like Switcheroo and Overheat, and Rotom Mo, who was a utility machine. Neither of them were Stealth Rock weak, allowing them to make effective use of Vault Switch. Galvantula might have been able to do well in NU, but sadly it never dropped sufficiently low in usage, leaving it stuck in RU's web. Generation 6 gave Galvantula one of the most potentially dangerous moves in the game, Sticky Web, the entry hazard that reduced the speed of grounded Pokemon by one stage. This had potentially huge implications, not so much for Galvantula itself, but as a means of supporting its teammates, specifically hard hitters that had trouble with their own speed. Galvantula on its own was still the same offensively hindered Pokemon it was before, but since it could at least reliably set up Sticky Web, it found a niche for itself. Now, no, it wasn't enough to cut it in for OU, but if found itself sticking around in Yuyu, an overall unimpressive Pokemon that jumps up a tier from its placement in the previous generation, is incredibly rare, and speaks to the power of Sticky Web. Webs were legitimately the only reason to use Galvantula, because otherwise it was just completely outclassed by Heliolisk. But technically anything with Sticky Web could use it, so what made Galvantula a good setter? Well, it was actually able to set it up. None of Yuyu's common taunt Pokemon, such as Cobalion and Mega Aerodactyl, could safely taunt Galvantula without risk a thunder KO. It was also able to maintain its webs in the face of common defog users. No way did Crobat or Empoleon want to switch into it. This was crucial so its teammates could actually abuse the webs. And that was really all there was to it. Galvantula was used solely because it could reliably set up and maintain sticky webs for its teammates. This was potentially huge as it enabled threatening but slow Pokemon like Honchkrow and Porygon Z. Now that being said, webs were not a dominant team style in Yu Yu due to their hit or miss nature as they didn't match up well against the metagame too reliably, especially given the prominence of already slow walls like Blissey and Lomomola, or Pokemon that hovered above the webs like Mega Aerodactyl. This meant Galvantula's niche, while legitimate, was even smaller in the context of the tier. However, when unexpected, webs could be absolutely devastating. There was nothing like suddenly being unable to outspeed Mamoswine, who came with the benefit of cleaving through Mega Aerodactyl with Ice Shard as well. This was entirely enabled by Galvantula, and as such, it had a genuine role in Gen 6 UU.
Galvantula returned for more sticky web antics in Generation 7. Although this time it ended up in Aryu, as Yu Yu was far better equipped to handle it this time around, with Rotom Heat completely walling Galvantula and being able to defog while being unaffected by sticky webs themselves. Latias being in the Yu Yu tier didn't help matters either. However, in Aryu, Galvantula reclaimed its old niche, and in the context of the larger metagame, was actually a better overall Pokemon than in the previous generation due to the web style's improved strength against this new, frailer metagame. Galvantula maintained its niche since its ability to reliably set up webs without fearing instant removal was unchanged. Its thunder absolutely destroyed common anti-hazard tools in Defog, Mandibuzz, and Rapid Spin Mega Blastoise, and its high speed meant it could often get an attack off after setting webs up, softening the other team up for his teammates to take advantage of. Many of Aryu's best Pokemon, like Gardevoir, Salazzle, and Zygarde 10%, were affected by Sticky Web, which meant Galvantula was setting its teammates up for success. Some notable examples of Galvantula's teammates were Honchkrow absolutely walloping slowed down teams, or Choice Band Tyrantrum and its head smash becoming an absolute terror. Even fast Pokemon like Swellow could take advantage of Sticky Web, since they could no longer be revenge killed by opposing Choice Scarfers. Sticky Web teams were tough to build and could have consistency issues, and having to dedicate another team slot to Stealth Rock hurt a lot, but they were a legitimate metagame choice that ran over many more standard teams, and it was all thanks to Galvantula. And as for Generation 8, since Galvantula is in Sword and Shield, and I know you would probably ask me about it anyway, well, at the time of this video, Sword and Shield's lower tiers for singles aren't too developed right now. Especially are you. The tier Galvantula and its Sticky Web are looking to make a return to, and its prospects are mixed. While there are less Pokemon with the Fog, there are also many Pokemon equipped with Heavy Duty Boots, which will ignore Sticky Web's speed drop. So only time will tell if Galvantula and its Web will be able to eke out a niche for the fourth generation in a row. And I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, where's the VGC for Galvantula? And to be honest, we're wondering that too. Because we couldn't find any notable performances for Galvantula through any of the years of VGC. And as for speculation on why that is, I don't know, I think it's pretty obvious. For starters, sticky web slash entry hazards in general just aren't a thing in VGC. Galvantula itself may have Compound Ice Thunder, but there are much more stronger electric types for that in most of the formats. It's also weak to both Rock Slide and Heat Wave, which are common spread moves among VGC. It's also really, really frail, and it doesn't make up for that frailness by having some sort of utility. Like even Butterfree in the current VGC has like something to do. Also, Rotom, something that stops it quite easily, is also very common every time it's allowed in a format. Like really, I could go on, but like, if it's allowed, just, just use Thunderous or Tapu Koko, whatever. And that's it. So how good was Galvantula actually? Well, it wasn't spectacular. In fact, in its debut generation, it was downright bad. However, the sixth generation gifted it a rare and powerful move, Sticky Web, of course, a move so potentially game-changing that it gave Galvantula a niche almost entirely on its own, even bumping it up an entire tier, which was just about unheard of for a mediocre lower tier Pokemon. It still wasn't a good Pokemon on its own, but it enabled its teammates in ways very little else could, bringing out the full threatening potential of monsters that were otherwise difficult to use reliably, Honchkrow in particular. Sticky Web wasn't the most reliable playstyle, but it still had its place, and Galvantula was its chief setter in the tiers it landed in, thanks to its ability to set it and maintain it consistently. Overall, Galvantula wasn't a world beater, but it had its own little web in the competitive sphere. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Galvantula, how would you make it better, would you make it hit harder, whatever it is, let me know in the comments. And to vote for next week's Pokemon, comment on the latest post in the community tab that should go up around the same time or a little bit after this video's release. And thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.